evening and welcome to tonight's lecture with Father Robator of the Society of Jesus. My name is Julia Dowd and I'm the Associate Director of the Lane Center for Catholic Studies and Social Thought here at USF. And the Lane Center is very honored to host Father Robator as the 2010 Summer Scholar in Residence. It was two years ago when Father Jim Keenan was here and he spent the summer at the Lane Center and told us this Jesuit from Africa a robotor. You have to get him here. He is incredible. And so, Bator, we're very happy that you were able to take some time out of your incredibly busy and full life and schedule to be with us here at USF this summer. Indeed, Father Robotor exemplifies the hallmarks of Jesuit education and the high ideals of USF's particular mission to provide a rigorous, world-class education with a global perspective to a new generation of leaders who will work to create a more humane and just world. Father Arobator was born in Benin, Nigeria. At age 16, he converted to Catholicism and became acquainted with the Jesuits. He attended Hakima College, the Jesuit School of Theology and Peace Studies in Nairobi, Kenya, where he earned a bachelor's degree in theology. In 1998, he was ordained a Jesuit priest, and in 2004, he earned a doctorate in theology from the University of Leeds in the UK. He has studied and worked in many parts of Africa, Europe, and North America, including Berkeley, where he earned a master's degree uh, from the Jesuit School of Theology and studied with some professors whom we're happy to host here tonight. Last year, Father Robotor was appointed provincial of the East Africa province of the Society of Jesus, which includes the countries of Kenya, Tanzania, Ethiopia, Uganda, and Sudan. He's the author or co-author of numerous articles and books, some of which are available for sale in the reception area, and more will be available next week and the following week. Uh, these titles include Theology Brewed in an African Pot, an Introduction to Christian Doctrine from an African Perspective, Faith Doing Justice, a Manual for Social Analysis, Catholic Social Teachings and Social Justice, and From Crisis to Kairos, a Critical Theology of the Mission of the Church in the Time of HIV, AIDS, Refugees, and Poverty. He played a significant role in framing the discussion of the Second Special Assembly for Africa of the Synod of Bishops, which was convened by Pope Benedict last year, and is currently at work on a compilation of papers from that gathering and follow-up to that meeting. Over the next two weeks, Father Robotor will present three public lectures on the context, the challenges, and concerns facing the African Church, and how they shape our theology and praxis of, as a world church and a global community of faith. His lecture tonight is titled, Not a Wall of Separation, Religion and Politics, The Challenge for the African Church. And following his talk, he will be open to receiving questions. Please join me in welcoming Father Robotor. conversation about the continent of Africa. And this may surprise you, but one of the interesting things I find about the, about the continent when I read about it, when I hear about it, is that it is not a very well-known continent. Really. Some might object and say and point to the fascination that Africa has had for explorers, navigators, missionaries, Colonialists, historians, anthropologists, game hunters, mercenaries, you name them. 
And of course, the ensuing volumes of literature that claim to illuminate the dark continent and its heart of darkness. And that is true. It is a very well-studied continent. But it takes, I believe, a much more careful reading of the context of life in Africa to separate fascination from facts, imagination from real-life situations. I have told this story before and to some of you who are present. When I first came to the U.S. about 14 years ago, someone asked me, would you happen to know my friend in Tanzania? <laughs> <laughs> now, for those of you who know, the travel time from Nigeria, where I come from, to Tanzania, uh, it's about the same as uh, from uh, San Francisco to New York, by then. And so the distance is vast. The simple point that I'm trying to make is that there are stereotypes, generalizations, images that are frequently identified or associated with the continent of Africa that I find quite distorted. I think that the media has, conceived, has conditioned the perception of many people in the global north to think of Africa as a simple reality, <coughs> albeit riddled with complex and emergency situations of conflict, diseases, and misery. I would like to draw your attention to a few interesting observations in Africa. And I believe that this will serve as a backdrop for this series. The first thing I would like to mention <coughs> is that Africa is a deeply religious continent. There's a new survey published by the Pew Forum on Religion and Public Life, which surveys religion especially Islam and Christianity in 19 countries of Sub-Saharan Africa. And the conclusion from that study, and I read part of it, is that indeed, <laughs> Sub-Saharan Africa is clearly among the most religious places in the world. In many countries across the continent, roughly nine in 10 people or more say that religion is very important by this key measure, the report continues, even the least religiously inclined nations in the region score higher than the United States, which is among the most religious of the advanced industrial countries. End of quote. The second observation I would like to make about the continent is that demographically speaking, Africa is a growing country. It is at the heart of what Philip Jenkins in his book, The New Christendom, calls the Southern Bone. An analyst projects dramatic population growth across most of the global south, or decreasing across most of the global north. The third point is that, judging by the demographic growth and expansion of the continents, that is, of the continent's two largest religions, that is, Islam and Christianity, religion in Africa is a very prosperous phenomenon. Since 1900, Christianity has recorded a net increase of 57%. Islam has recorded a net increase of 29%, and both at the expense of indigenous Africa. 